Sure. So, uh, hi everyone. So this is um, one of our series for learning microservices. Um, the topic that I, cho I choose to discuss today is um, API gateways. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with the pattern of API gateways, but um, it is used to solve a particular problem in uh, microservices. So I'll open my notepad, uh, demo something. So for example, um, Boost. Boost has uh, several services, uh, coaching, RCA, performance reviews. Um, initially, uh, Boost has been created as a monolith. So all of these are under a single, uh, the initial two modules are under a single uh, monolith structure. Um, the problem that I have right now is that um, I need to work uh, with a team. So uh, it would be a collaborative development. Um, we all know that collaborative development is really hard to do if you're working on a single source code um, in a single project because you'll be uh, you'll eventually bump to each other and then you'll have merge conflicts that you'll have to resolve. Um, it's time consuming. It's not uh, what you call this. It's not effective uh, in my opinion. So uh, to solve that problem, um, we're going to break Boost into uh, services, into microservices. So we have the Boost, the primary Boost, which is the SPA, the, the, the front end. So each services that we have will be converted to a microservice. Uh, the microservice model that we're going to follow is a uh, one database per service pattern. So one DB service. Now you have a bunch of um, APIs now. So you have two options to do this. You can create individual APIs. So let's say you host this in IIS, your, your SPA file. So and then all your APIs will be hosted as a subsite. That would work. Uh, the problem with that is that you'll have to replicate your logic for authorization and authentication in other stuff here. So yeah, so that you'll have a redundant code, but that works. Uh, that's a that's a pattern in a microservice. So uh, you could do that. Um, for me, I don't want to deal with that. I want to use uh, something called an API gateway. So the concept is similar to subsiting in IIS, but instead of IIS handling the uh, what you call this the aggregation, so uh, you'll handle it via code. Okay. Uh, by the way, there's also API gateway in uh, Amazon uh, and AWS. You can also use that service, but um, it's not. You can't work on it offline, so I don't recommend it for our development. I recommend uh, using an API gateway provider in C Sharp, which is called Ocelot. So what does an API gateway do? So an API gateway do is that it acts like a reverse proxy or a proxy, if you prefer that term, uh, to route all the requests to uh, many to our other services. So for example, um, There's a diagram. Hold on. Mm. Where's the diagram? Big picture. Main service battery console. Identity. So there. So if you see this, the idea is each services. So let's just say each services is an API hosted under a single IIS, but it's not publicly exposed. We'll have an I, uh, another application, this houses the Ocelot, and then it would route all the, uh, the requests to other APIs belonging to the same server. It could be the same server, it could be a different server. Um, it could be anywhere, but de definitely you can route it to somewhere. So that's the idea, that's what we want to solve. That notepad. So there. So yeah. So it's just routing. Uh, so how does that solve my initial problem of uh, collaboration? 
by using an API gateway, uh, I can work on this. And Abhishek can work on this. And then Shita can work on this. So the only time we would meet is, uh, is in the front end. So one could take turns with that, but that's less minimal as opposed to working in a giant monolithic code. So uh, we have varying approaches on how we code. Uh, that's totally up to them on how they're going to code their APIs. But as long as it returns a specific endpoint, then I think we can immediately integrate our working solution. So we won't run into conflicts. Hey, I'm going to update the database schema to this and that. We don't have to collaborate with that anymore because we have one database uh, per service and it's isolated by domain. So there's that. Um, with all that talk, uh, I'll give a quick demo on how to set up Ocelot. Um Before I start, um, Let's see, what do I have here? Uh, in my local machine, I have EPMS API. I don't know if you're aware of EPMS API. But basically, uh, it's this one. So it houses the uh, EPMS employee information. It's an endpoint. So that this is already in production. We can, we can use it. So we have uh, a, this endpoints, okay? Now, I'm going to create a new project to show you how to uh, set up in Ocelot. Uh, I'll create a new one. Oh, what's this? File, new project. So I'm going to select ASP.NET Core, Web Application, uh, Project Test, New or Select Demo. And I create it. So it's going to ask, uh, I'm going to use an empty one. I don't need, uh, let's just say this one. So it's automatically pre-configured for me. So there. So I have a controllers. I have this weather forecast. It's a demo. But we won't need it, so I'll just delete it. That and that. I have no need for those. Um, to get started with Ocelot, you need to add a pro, uh, the, the NuGet, NuGet package. Oh, not this one. Search for Ocelot. There, this one. And you select this, and you click install. So this is the uh, provider. It's by Tom Pallister. There you go. Now, in your uh, startup, you need to say you're going to, I don't think you need this anymore because you're not using any controllers, services that add Ocelot. And then here, I don't think we also need this. We just need app that use Ocelot. And we have to say wait. Uh, the wait command is there to handle the asynchronous pattern. Uh, internally, this, is uses, uh, this uses an async await pattern. So uh, long story short, it prevents the dead, deadlocks happening from your code within. So you can read more about the documentation. If I go further, uh, it'll take much of our time. So I'll skip that. But this is required for you to set it up in your code. So that's not the only setup that you need. So we uh, we added in the services. We added Ocelot here in our configure. You also need uh, a configuration file. You need to add a JSON file. Where is that? And let's say call it. Yeah, so you now have this bare bones uh, oscillate JSON, and we need to copy uh, the configuration file. So a configuration file uh, contains this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So this is the oscillate file. And then you need to register that here. This. It says copy. <clears throat> Uh, you need to add this line, that specific line. So what that line does is it registers the uh, oscillate configuration. So it added the, uh, it added this file. So let's just say we built it, okay? Now, um, recall earlier that I have the EPMS API. So there, let's just go here so I don't have to type. So there. So let's just say I typed all of it. So there are specific um, keywords here in the JSON structure. So in your routes, you have to define the downstream path, downstream, downstream scheme, and downstream host and ports. So downstream, when we say downstream, this will be your source in, in a server somewhere. So it could be in a remote server, it could be the local host. So as you can see, I have EPMS API in, in what you call this, in my machine. So I added that. Uh, I need to route, uh, for example, in Ocelot, I have this hosted somewhere. When I call slash employees API, it should return me the employees endpoint. Okay. So let's try that. Oh, and by the way, this is another important configuration. I forgot to explain. Um, in Ocelot, you have to define the base URL. Uh, the base URL is the URL that Ocelot would be running in uh, in your client. It can't be the local, uh, what you call this? It can't be the local base URL. It should be the front-facing one. So for example, if you're under a load balancer URL uh, and then it's registered with the domain, it's going to be uh, sample.taskas.com. So that's what you need to put here. You need to put the actual one. So for production, you'll have to do that. Uh, why is that needed? Uh, Ocelot needs that so that it can translate the incoming uh, URL addresses and map it properly to this uh, downstream path. Okay. So going back to routes, downstream is where you're going to source the API. Upstream path is what you're going to map it to. So for example, I receive a request of employees. Um, it, it's a get method. Uh, I should return this downstream path source from this uh, domain. So let's try that right now. Is it running? Mm, okay, it's running. So here, um, it's running in 5001. Uh, I don't have anything mapped under um, the default one. So I'll go and call employees. Now, if I go call employees, um, it worked. Um, I'm connected to my EPMS API, but as you can see here, I am missing an API key. So how are we going to add those? So luckily, Ocelot is very uh, flexible enough to allow us to add our own configuration. So it's very simple. You just add a delegate handler. So you can add it per route or you can make it global. So for this specific in instance, I need it just for this specific route. So how did I register that? So in the startup, I added a delegate handler and I register a class here. Um, if you want to make it global, you just say true here, but we're not gonna do that. So the EPMS handler is here. Um, it's a middleware. Um, it executes prior calling the downstream path. So what I have here is that, uh, what I'm telling here is that in my request, I have headers. I want you to add the API key, API key headers, which is X dash API key and then uh, the password. So there. So once we have that, uh, I've registered it in my Ocelot configuration. 
upon running this, I should now be able to go uh, through it. Okay. So it's empty. Slash. There you go. So now it loads. So um, if you're worried about the overhead, so um, the overhead uh, as per what they stated is somewhere around 2 to 3 MS. So that's very negligible compared to the benefits that it would provide in a development team. Um, yeah, but there's that. So yeah, so that's how it works. So let's try adding uh, more endpoints. So let's say if I want to use another endpoint. So this is a very specific endpoint. Let's use this one. Mm -hmm. So I'll stop this. I'll replicate this routing. So in this route that I'm going to add, I'm going to add Uh, employees slash what's the endpoint number? Endpoint number. So it's a very long URL. I'm just gonna use it here. And then if you see this, uh, I think that's how you map it. So I'm just guessing, but I think it will work. Uh, so it's employees slash employee number. So let's try that running. It's running and then let's say slash employees slash 301 I hope that works. And it worked. So here you go. So this is my employee number. I've successfully routed it. Uh, by the way, you can use wildcard so you don't have to create a a manual mapping here. Uh, you can read more in the documentation of Ocelot. So I'm just giving you the idea of uh, how to use it. So if you have multiple APIs, uh, you can definitely use this. For example, you want to integrate uh, EPMS API to your application, but you don't want to create a bunch of HTTP client within your application, you can use this pattern. So, so there's that. Um, what else? So I've added the handler. Um, there are more specific and advanced use cases here where you could check the claims. So for example, um, you would have authorization in place in your, op, uh, in your API gateway so you don't have to put authentication authorization in your microservice. And then you would require this specific endpoint to just have uh, what you call this, uh, a role of admin. You can definitely do it by mapping here. So require role claims uh, something. Uh, it's, in, it's there in the document. Uh, there, claims transformation. So they add claims to request. Uh, for example, you have claims in your uh, identity. You can transform them. You can put them as a header. You can put them as part of the query string and so on and so forth. Um, and for the authorization part, so where is that? Authentication, where is it? Request aggregation. Oh, there. So it's very straightforward. So once you register how you do your JWT, so you can just say in this route, I would require the user type or mm -hmm. let's say roles. That's the plain mm -hmm. name. And then say admin here. So you can do that. So I don't have to duplicate all my. Uh, so going back to my initial problem, I solved the duplicate code issue. I don't have to put authorization and authentication measures in my API, uh, although I could, uh, but it's much more centralized now. My microservice can be now reused by other, uh, what you call this, other uh, web services that we have uh, without worrying on how to uh, integrate an authorization thing. Um, yeah. So basically, that's it. It's straightforward as it gets. Um, any questions from the team? Okay. 
Hello. Guys, uh, do you have any questions? So CJ basically Ocelot is a wrapper for our APIs that we are going to provide. Correct. And so can you provide Swagger patch for this also? The wrap APIs. Sorry, sorry, can you repeat? Can we provide Swagger patch for our Ocelot uh, wrap API? A Swagger API, yes, definitely you can. So uh, as you can see earlier, um, this is the basic, uh, what you call this, the .NET course startup page. You can register any middleware that you have here. So since Swagger is a middleware and a service that you could register, you could definitely use it here. So they have that use case in their demo site. We definitely have to worry about database because there are uh, many common tables that must be utilized among uh, different microservices. So that is the duplication there. Or do you think that can be avoided? Uh, the dupli Sorry, can, can, can you uh, share that? DB, DB duplication, database tables duplication. Because as you mentioned, in each microservice, we have a separate database for us. So uh, there might be tables that is needed uh, in each of those APIs. So those tables will be duplicated among APIs. Yeah. So the idea in uh, microservices, it should be a standalone as much as possible. So uh, with what you're saying is a valid concern. Yes, there would be a duplication, but definitely that redundancy is required. So I'll show you a use case why that is important. Okay. Hold on. Um, I still have some time. Hold on. So I can use this. Where is that? It's so slow. So oh, by the way, guys, while waiting for this, don't access the dev server. Uh, I've asked InfoSec to scan it. Uh, there might be a malware inside. So if you ca already copied files within it, just don't execute those files uh, and delete them as soon as you can. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. So, um, what Abhishek was saying is that uh, there will be redundant tables. So, definitely that would be your case. Um, so, as you can see here, there is employees. Uh, what do you call this? Um, employees database, uh, employees table here, and RCA, root cause analysis, is part of uh, Boost. It's a microservice uh, of Boost. So there, it also has its own um, employees table. So that's the redundancy that uh, Abhishek was talking about. So why is that necessary in a microservice? Uh, this is to make them not so uh, dependent. So, for example, if I'm just going to get data uh, from what you call this, from this service, let's say I want to get all the employees who has uh, coaching logs created. So, I can definitely do that because all the data that I require are here. And the copies, um, they're not uh, inserted there, not unless they're really added. So, for example, a coaching log for, for me, my employee record would only be created if a coaching log was created for me. It's not going to be created in a, what you call this, in a synchronized manner na, uh, where we have uh, EPMS. Uh, let's say we don't need to dump the entire EPMS employees data here in your application. You don't need to do that. You would only add them um, if you have the need for their data. So there's that. Uh, I hope that answers uh, your concern, Abhishek. Yeah, I get that. But uh, the, yes, we are... Not going to publish the data, but the schema will be there. That's what my concern is. But uh, yes, sure, we can handle it. We have explained. That. Thank you. Mm, okay. Um, yeah. So, hey, uh, by the way, guys, API gateways should not what you call this. It's not uh, what you call this. It's not a must for every project that you're gonna create. API gateway solves a specific problem. It's not. Uh, one sol it's, the, it's not an ultimate solution for all. It should be used with a careful consideration because by doing this, you add uh, complexity to your application. So uh, instead of being a monolith, you remove that simplicity and you move to a more complex architecture. Uh, but the complex architecture trade-off is that you can now work in teams 
uh, more efficiently. So, so there's that. Uh, you must be, uh, you must have that mindset. So, and before considering changing your application to uh, entire microservices architecture, uh, another consideration is that um, it's best that you start with the monolith because you can definitely see the segregation in the services and then branch out uh, later on. So that's an that's a better path to take instead of immediately starting with a microservices architecture because uh, that added uh, that adds a lot of uh, what you call this uh, boilerplate and uh, complexity to your initial uh, project and you might not uh, you might take a long time just to create an MVP. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, uh, if you want to explore it more, yeah, just go to Ocelot. Uh, yeah, so, just, so just search for Ocelot in uh, Google, Ocelot in C Sharp. It will be the first one that would appear there. Um, any other questions from the team before we conclude? Uh, by the way, in our next session, what I'll be showing is how to use API Gateway in conjunction with the uh, SPA. So there's that. Oh, so any questions from the team? Okay, I think that's good. Uh, I hope you learned something new. Uh, Santosh, uh, we're done. Thank you, CJ, and thank you, team. Uh, CJ, I'll be arranging next session on Tuesday or Thursday, when you want? Uh, Thursday, uh, I prefer more Thursday. Thursday. Okay, I'll arrange a session on Thursday.